burrowing. Animals do it well, and so can robots. Kind of. A lot of burrowing organisms are soft. They can bend, stretch, and fit their bodies into small places. Does their softness make them good burrowers? What if we made robots soft too? And how can we make them good at burrowing? Burrowing can be divided into two stages, submerging, going from above ground to below ground, and subterranean locomotion, moving within the ground. Both soft organisms and robots use different methods for both stages of burrowing. Let's take a look. Many long animals, like earthworms and snakes, probe their heads into the ground. This root-inspired robot also probes by 3D printing its body to grow into the ground. Organisms like earthworms use mouth excavation to eat and cast soil when submerging into and traveling within the ground. Similarly, this excavating robot vacuums up granular media in front of it, kind of like an earthworm. Bivalves like clams probe and rock their bodies to submerge themselves. This method hasn't been seen in soft robots. Worms widen their heads to make cracks in the ground, which open up paths for them to travel in. This method also hasn't been seen in soft robots. Generally, many soft robots don't have a method to submerge themselves. Instead, they are placed into the ground by people or rely on mounts to help aim them down. When bivalves are in the ground, they use two anchor locomotion to move. This cyclic method involves the front and the back of their body taking turns to move down. Soft robots also use this method. This robot moves the front, then the back of its body, using red kirigami skins to grip the soil. Like with two anchor locomotion, peristalsis involves expanding and contracting different parts of the body in a smoother wave pattern. This robot mimics peristalsis seen in earthworms, with three segments taking turn to expand and contract. Similarly, undulation involves waves, but to wiggle bodies. Many animals undulate for subterranean locomotion, like the sandfish lizard. Flatfish also undulate, but very quickly to flick sand to shallowly submerge themselves. This Saharan sand viper undulates too, but does so more slowly to cover itself. Inspired by the Saharan sand viper, this robot undulates its body. Using machine learning, it can undulate to submerge itself in its environment. Plant roots burrow by tip extension. They grow at the leading tip into the ground. A class of soft robots inspired by roots, called vine robots, use the same method to grow into the ground. Like how people swim in water, some robots swim underground. They use compliant arms that can push granular media to move forward, then bend to recover back. Robots have the advantage of using infinitely rotating mechanisms, which nature doesn't have. Some robots like this one have drills to loosen and move granular media. This robot rotates its flagella to propel forward, like a propeller. Both soft organisms and robots use methods to alter their drag when burrowing. Fluidization is a method that involves spraying fluid to loosen granular media, like quicksand. Here, a sand octopus jets water, lowering its drag to submerge itself. Robots do this too. Here, a vine robot sprays air into sand to make burrowing easier. Many organisms have small features on their skin that provide anisotropic friction. That means these features grip the environment when moved in one direction and slide in the other. For example, worms have CT that grip into soil. These worm-inspired robots also have anisotropic features that prevent backward movement while allowing forward movement. Plant roots lower their drag when burrowing with two methods. First, they shed cells at their tip to create a slippery barrier, called root sloughing. Roots also secrete mucilage, which is a gelatinous substance that coats the walls of the burrow. The shape of the leading tip of a body is very important in determining how easy it is to burrow. Many animals, like the sandfish lizard, have a pointy head to help them burrow. Robots, like this one, also have wedge-shaped heads and other control surfaces to help them burrow and stay underground. Soft robots, using methods inspired by biology, can burrow. But how can they be improved? If we want to make deployable autonomous soft robots, we need to implement submerging mechanisms. We need to give them the ability to go into the ground without help. Soft burrowing robots can also be improved through better drag manipulation methods, enabling both the increasing and decreasing of friction on demand. 
Creating burrowing gates that can adapt is also important, since conditions of the underground environment constantly shift. Using machine learning might help with this. To help robots decide how to adapt, they need the ability to sense the environmental conditions. They can't see underground, so using different methods of sensing must be used. And finally, enabling soft burrowing robots to function without tethers is beneficial to improving burrowing abilities by reducing drag. This won't be easy and will require moving batteries and actuators on board. By mimicking the effective burrowing strategies of nature, roboticists are unlocking new possibilities for exploration underground. As we begin to tackle the many challenges posed, robots will become better burrowers, closer to their biological counterparts. The fusion of biology and robotics is just beginning to scratch the surface of what's possible beneath our feet.